Hi, I'm Ann McKenzie. I'm coordinator of college relations at Villanova University College of Nursing. And I'm here today with Dr. Nancy Schartz Hopko, who's professor and director of our PhD in nursing program. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the program and share some information that might be helpful for prospective students. So how would someone know if the PhD is the right degree for them? That's a great question. I think the first thing to determine is what they envision themselves doing in the future. Most people who approach us about a PhD are masters prepared already. Uh, most tend to be in advanced practice roles. And so the, the first question is, what would they like to do when they grow up? Do they envision themselves uh, continuing in practice and perhaps uh, moving into leadership roles in their practice setting? Or do they envision themselves moving into a teaching role or a combination role? The PhD is clearly um, better for people who envision themselves moving into academia or who envision themselves moving into basic research. But if it's clinical leadership that they desire, I would urge them to look at DNP programs or perhaps um, continue in their organization or comparable organizations without going for a doctoral degree. So now I've chosen the PhD program and can you talk a little bit about how the program is delivered? Yes. Uh, the students begin the program here on campus in the uh, summer sessions that are always offered starting the day after Memorial Day. Uh, the first summer they come for orientation and their first course for two weeks. The second summer they come for three weeks and the third summer they come for two weeks. But 80% of the course is delivered in an online format. Mm -hmm. We use synchronous webinar technology so that students are interacting with me and with one another um, during their courses. Once in a while we do asynchronous activities, but for the most part it is synchronous. So from start to finish, how long does it actually take to finish the program? That's a question everybody wants to know. <laughs> I can speak definitively about coursework. Uh, so we have laid out two curriculum plans on the uh, website, a full-time plan and a part-time plan. The full-time plan can be completed in 25 months of coursework, and the part-time plan can be completed in a little over three years. Then comes dissertation, uh, and that's where the variability comes in. But it is possible for somebody to complete the dissertation in, I, I say, typically one and a half to two years of, of good, steady effort. Mm -hmm. If I really am interested in PhD, do I absolutely have to have a master's in nursing coming into it? We do offer an option for students who have uh, great potential, who are strong students, to come in directly with their BSN. But in our program, we do require that they complete master's requirements along the way. So if they were to come in uh, with the BSN planning to complete the PhD, it would save them around 20 credits at this point, given mm -hmm. some changes that we've made in the uh, education track uh, due to AACN Essentials changes. That's if they want the education track. If they decided they wanted to be a nurse practitioner or an anesthesia person mm -hmm. along the way, uh, they could pursue that with us, but it, it would not save them a lot of time to plan it as one package. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can. I'm, I'm very happy to talk to very talented BSN graduates. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Uh, one thing I've had prospective students ask at our open houses or via email is, what about that dissertation? Mm. How do we help people along the way be prepared, as prepared as they can be with the dissertation? Great question. I think a strength of this program, uh, based on what graduates have told me, is that we start students early in the program beginning to delve into the literature and formulate the question for their dissertation. And many courses along the way contribute to proposal development. So they start with dissertation seminar one in the first fall. Dissertation two is in the first spring. Dissertation three is in the second fall. And then the, the third summer course is their final dissertation course. There are other courses, such as their concepts class and philosophy of science, the two research design courses that feed into proposal development. So it is very likely that somebody can have a draft of the proposal in hand when they finish coursework and they're then ready to work with their committee to finalize it. 
And you just mentioned the word committee. So how does that come together? How's a dissertation committee actually formed? The student will know who is eligible in the college faculty to chair committees, and they will have had many of us in classes along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, they've been here for three summers so that they have an opportunity to meet people. Uh, they will recruit their chair. I tell them it's like courtship, and they <laughs> propose. Uh, they recruit their chair, and then the chair and the student determine among other faculty, mostly within the College of Nursing, but sometimes outside the college, who is a good fit for this study? Right. Now, a dissertation and that whole process is not necessarily inherent knowledge for a prospective student. Right. So can you give folks a sense of what a dissertation actually entails? Right. The dissertation is uh, of the uh, conduct and write-up of a research study. So uh, they do it in stages. Uh, it's not like they have to run home after coursework and sit down and write a book. They do it <laughs> in stages. Uh, the first stage is the development of a proposal. Typically it's a three-chapter document, the introduction to the problem, the review of literature, and then the um, methodology section. So if you look at a research article, the structure is similar, but they are longer sections. Uh, that is defended with the committee members and some outside readers. Uh, that's a process of getting another two pairs of eyes to give critique and make the study as strong as it can be. Uh, they then go through the uh, Institutional Review Board for the Protection of Human Subjects. They are then free to collect their data. They may, that's often the most challenging part of the process is getting people to participate in the study. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another point where the length of time is a little unpredictable. Uh, but after they, they co collect the data, they analyze the data, whether it's qualitative or whether it's statistical, and uh, then they write up their final two chapters usually. Chapter four is the uh, findings, chapter five is the implications and uh, conclusions of the study. They have a final defense and then off they go as Dr. So-and-so. <laughs> a happy day. Yes. Um, again, on the practical end of things, what about financial assistance for the PhD in nursing program? We have been generously funded by HRSA through the mechanism of the Nurse Faculty Loan Program. That money is intended for people who are specifically in programs preparing them to be nursing faculty. Uh, so that for U.S. citizens offers um, up to $35,000 a year, up to five years for tuition fees, books, and supplies. The deal is that after they graduate, if they teach full-time in any U.S. accredited nursing school, uh, they can erase 85% of what they owe and pay off the balance over 10 years at 3%. Uh, now, I have to say, uh, we are in an election year, and there's a lot of discussion about cutting costs, and so every year I sort of hold my breath, and I don't know what the federal government will do in the subsequent year, mm -hmm. but so far we have money. Mm -hmm. We've had other students get some nice funding from other organizations for which they've specifically applied, uh, the National League for Nursing, um, and the uh, American Cancer Society, for instance, as well as small funding from uh, maybe local chapters of their organizations. Mm -hmm. Many of them are, are employer subsidized. And along the same line, what about grad assistantships? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we were very fortunate last year to have our first uh, graduate assistantship for doctoral students funded by the Dean's Office here in the College of Nursing and we will have a second student in that role this year. They work 20 hours a week for the college uh, these doctoral GAs are specifically tagged to a faculty member who is conducting research okay. and they spend a bit of time serving the undergraduate program. We made the decision last year and I think everybody involved thinks it's a good one that because we have a state-of-the-art simulation lab, their undergraduate program service is in the lab so that they leave this place with good hands on expertise. Mm -hmm. They get uh, for that service, they get tuition and fees for the year that they do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we get a lot of inquiries about the program from around the country, but also from around the world. So given the fact it's an online program, 
Would you speak a little bit about opportunities for international students? I know they have some unique questions for you. And we, we do have several students representing three countries in the program at this time. Uh, the first thing I would say is that students overseas need to be very clear with their own employers and their own ministries of health or ministries of education as to whether or not they are permitted to engage in online study. If they are, they can participate in this program the way our U.S. students typically do. If they are not permitted to engage in online study, uh, we can accommodate them coming to campus and sitting with faculty while most of their classmates will be online. Mm -hmm. So that's a visa requirement. We mm -hmm. do accommodate in-class learning for mm -hmm. those students. Uh, Nancy, are there any final words you feel might be helpful for a prospective student to hear as they're looking at our program versus others or the PhD versus the DNP? Uh, just, I would urge them to scour the website. We've had a lot of feedback from students over the years that there's a lot of good information there. It's very helpful and, and fairly easy to use. And we are very responsive to questions that they may wish to ask by phone, by email. Uh, I'm delighted to talk to anybody, even if they are not yet at a point of having decided that a PhD is what they want or that Villanova is the right place for them. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to tell students who are interested in other careers besides nursing education where else they might look. Right. So um, Great. So they can find more at um, villanova.edu slash nursing and follow the links and find your email address there. Yes, they can. Great. Well, thanks for all the uh, good information today. It should be helpful for prospective students. Thank you, Ian.